from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 5. We begin tonight with an alert from North Dakota officials. Williston police want you to be on the lookout for two missing people who may be in Fargo. Police say 38-year-old Miranda Wells and 13-year-old Jaden Wells are missing out of Williston. Miranda is 5 feet tall with strawberry blonde hair and green eyes, weighing 125 pounds. Police say Jaden is 5'1 with blue eyes and brownish red hair. He weighs 95 pounds. Police believe that Miranda and Jaden Wells are in the Fargo area, so if you see them or if you have any information at all, please call officials at the number on your screen. Just a short time ago, family and friends of Cameron Bolton gathered outside Sanford Medical Center, sharing stories and memories before the Donate Life flag was raised. Bolton, who was just 22 years old, lost his life earlier this week after a car crash near Mapleton. Cameron will be at helping at least four families have a second chance with his donations. It, it was really hard for us and it took a long time for us to really realize that we are going to get our camera back and he's going he's going to turn into a, a hero and he's going to mm -hmm. save other lives and we are so proud of him. We love him. Hear more from Cameron's family and friends tonight on Valley News Live at 6. By the way, so far Bolton has given a given four people a second chance of life again by donating his organs. His family says there will be more in the coming days. Tonight at 9, family and friends are honoring Bolton with a lantern lighting at West Fargo High School, where Cameron graduated from. Meanwhile, the thought on everyone's mind is how our weather, weather will cooperate heading into the 4th of July holiday. For what we can expect, let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch? Well, we are expecting more thunderstorms, and yes, some could be severe. Some areas will not have as much of an impact, and that looks to be the case up north. But in the Southern Valley into Minnesota, things could be active. Just some scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder as we head into the early evening hours. And the big picture shows nothing too significant forming at this time. But in the area shaded in yellow, late tonight and during the overnight towards daybreak tomorrow, some storms that could pack some damaging wind and hail. Uh, even isolated tornadoes mainly down to the south would be a possibility. We'll keep our eyes on the skies this evening. We could see Southern Valley storms. Those will move off into Minnesota. We'll keep our eyes on that risk. It's overnight when we could see some storms develop and move out of the western and central Dakotas into the valley that could be robust wind-wise. So if you happen to be camping, you're in a camper, just know where you can go to stay safe. And we got to tell you, tomorrow afternoon looks pretty quiet. Warm temperatures, mid and upper 80s throughout the lakes country and here in the valley. Thunderstorms will be confined mainly to central Minnesota, so I think it looks like a good rest of the day once we get through and weather the morning storms. Sounds good. Can't wait to learn more. Thanks, Hutch. You bet. A Jamestown man is sitting on jail in jail on multiple warrants after trying to run away from police. Authorities say 43-year-old Robert Lee was spotted in Jamestown yesterday afternoon around 3. When officers tried to talk with him, he took off running through yards. Lee was eventually arrested for fleeing, possession of drugs and paraphernalia, along with warrants for burglary and theft of property. He's currently in the Stutzman County Correctional Center awaiting formal charges. A North Dakota man convicted of drugging a teenager and sexually assaulting her for several months has been sentenced to 20 years in prison. Prosecutors say 38-year-old George Lyons gave sleeping pills to a teenage girl once a week under saying that he needed to clean her ears from July 2009 and January 2010. During a sentencing hearing Monday, the girl told the judge that all of her relationships have been damaged and she is afraid Lyons will retaliate when he's released from prison. Lyons' attorney is expected to appeal his conviction. Fargo police want you to be aware of a high-risk sex offender now living in the north part of the city. 32-year-old Joshua Gomez is now living at 725 First Street North, which is pretty close to Mickelson Field. He's convicted on multiple counts of gross sexual imposition and indecent exposure. Those incidents happened between 2000 and 2007 and also included multiple offenses against teenage girls, including exposing himself to people. Gomez will be a registered sex offender for the rest of his life. Crews will begin work on the phase two of the reconstruction of 47th Avenue South on Monday. During phase two of this project, they will be closed from Excuse me, 47th Avenue South will be closed from Five Star Storage to South Columbia Road. 
Access to Yulin Park Softball Complex parking lot will only be available from the east. This project is being done in two phases. This job is being done in phases in order to try to limit any disruptions to facilities in that area. The Minnesota Attorney General filed a lawsuit against a major pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company that she says misrepre misrepresented itself. Attorney General Lori Swanson is suing Purdue Pharma, alleging the company downplayed the dangers of their prescription drugs. The lawsuit looks to recover money to cover increasing health care and society costs related to the opioid epidemic. We'll have to show you know, the company made these misrepresentations. They said it's safe. They say it's not addictive. They minimize the addiction. Therefore, they should ultimately be responsible for any you know, reasonable uh, effect of that. In a statement, Purdue Pharma denies misrepresenting their products, calling the lawsuit a disappointment. They add that they're amid good faith negotiations. The 4th of July holiday often includes spending time outside, but for those who burn easily, you might want to check this out. A Texas mom posted her family's remedy to Facebook. Now that post has since been shared hundreds of thousands of times with nearly 50,000 comments. But does it really work? Valley News team's Rose Itzkovitz asks if it's really the best relief out there and also if it's safe. It almost seems too simple. Just lather on some menthol shaving cream, keep on for 30 minutes, repeat the next day, and then the next as needed. This Texas mom of two young girls says it's her chiller of choice when relieving that burning red. But is it the best remedy out there? Dr. Michael Blankenship, a dermatologist at Essentia Health, doesn't think so. The issue is that a lot of those shaving creams will have emulsifiers and other things in them which can act a bit like soaps or other materials and that can also be irritating to skin that's already uh, impaired. Still, many on social media seem to like it. The post, initially intending to just help some friends out, now has more than 200,000 shares and is being dubbed a 30-minute miracle cure. It's you know readily available and it seems like it's kind of an interesting treatment, so I'm sure that that's generated a lot of uh, information too. Dr. Blankenship says menthol does have a cooling effect, and so does the shaving cream itself. Because it's sort of liquidy and it, as it evaporates, it also has a cooling effect. So it's not that it doesn't have you know ways that it could work or efficacy, and it probably does help some people. But he warns if you are to try it, it's definitely just for the more basic sunburn. No blisters, no peeling. His favorite treatment? The dermatologist recommends sticking something hypoallergenic, like Vaseline, in the fridge. But one thing the Texas mom likes about the shaving cream is you can wash it off in 30 minutes, as opposed to Vaseline. It's a bit sticky. Yep, so wear a white cotton shirt to bed. But of course, Dr. Blankenship first and foremost recommends preventative measures staying on top of the sunblock application. And so does the Texas mom, who says she's only trying to help her friends, who may have gotten burned anyway. In Fargo, Roseskivis, Valley News Live. And these remedies are all just for sunburn relief. Doctors tell us once the DNA is damaged, the topical treatments can't re reverse the risk of skin cancer. A major gift this day ahead of the 4th of July aimed at helping some needy families with food independence. Smithfield Foods, the world's largest pork processor and hog producer, is donating 40,000 pounds of pork products to the Great Plains Food Bank. Smithfield is marking the 10-year anniversary of its Helping Hungry Homes program by donating all kinds of meats to food banks across the country. You're probably familiar with some of the brands they're associated with. Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs, Farmland, Armor, and John Morrell among them. Company executives say this donation will provide 160,000 servings of pork and other protein products to the people to the food bank that they serve. We want to get past the misconception that it's simply the person on the corner with a sign. The people that are hungry are oftentimes your neighbors, even your relatives. They've had a car breakdown. Their hours got cut. They need a little bit of help to get by. This is the 34th stop on Smithfield's Hungry Homes Tour. Food bank officials say one in nine North Dakotans face hunger every day. Before you hit the road for 4th of July vacation, don't forget to pack the dessert. Mel's Gluten-Free Bakery has sweet treats that will make your cookout shine this year. From the cookies and cream cupcake to the apple cinnamon cake, there'll be something for everyone to enjoy at your 4th of July party. A lot of variety, a lot of different things to choose from, whether it's muffins, cookies, mini cupcakes, cupcakes, cakes, caramel rolls, uh, 
you can grab any of those things and enjoy your 4th of July with some good desserts. Mel's makes all of their cupcakes with their own gluten-free flour, making sure that it's enjoyable for everyone.